Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and we found out this week on Arrow, when you tell people the truth, they totally get struck by lightning, especially if you are Felicity. Seriously, there were so many big moments, I actually had to expand my top 5 to top 10, so this is actually going to be a little bit longer than normal, just because there is so much awesome to talk about. If anyone was watching Twitter, Stephen Amell totally tweeted that Miley Cyrus line, I came in like a wrecking ball. The way he wrote it though, you have to imagine that he was singing it, it was really funny. If you're finding me for the first time, I typically do Arrow videos every Wednesday and then Q&As on Thursday. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. It's kind of like my DC time during the week. So, since there is so much awesome, I'm going to do top 10 moments, then I'll list as many comic book references as possible and do my review. So, careful for potential spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet, but here we go. Number 10, Slade recruits an army. He's going to turn all those prisoners into super soldiers and just let Brother Blood use them to take over the city. This also tied back into what Diggle was saying at the beginning. There's too many prisoners since Oliver stopped killing him. Thus, Slade's army is born. They were all headed to Starling City's version of Arkham, so they're basically grade-A psychos. Also, here's an image of all those people with full-on Deathstroke gear on. Someone captured it from the City of Blood episode. They're all dressed up like Slade. Pretty freaking sweet, huh? Number 9, Sarah tries to suicide bomb Slade. WTF. This was really important foreshadowing for a future WTF moment, I think. First off, Sarah is super dark. There was even that line, when did you get so bad? David Nichol from Stargate goes all WTF on her. It failed, but I think she's going to try and use that idea again during present day. Only what if she turns herself into a bomb? Let me know if you agree. Please don't die, Katie Lots. Suicide bombing Deathstroke wouldn't work anyway. Mirakuru can heal anything, except for this. Number 8, Oliver's fight montage en route to Slade. Stephen Amell actually posted a behind-the-scenes video of this whenever they were practicing it, like the Day in the Life videos he does on Facebook. It was months ago, and at the time he couldn't say anything about it. First off though, Arrow's stunts are just awesome, and this, in his own words, was one of the biggest and most well-choreographed montages all season long. I definitely agree, one of the best fight sequences overall. It's also interesting because you have to think about the time jump between the production and the episodes actually airing. Just this week he did another post saying, they only had about 12 episodes left or so of shooting this season, and it takes over a little week to shoot an episode. So that means that they're basically filming the finale like right now as we speak, so I'll talk more about that later. Number 7, Oliver and Slade totally catch up at the police station. This was their first real moment together since the island. I don't consider that scene outside the car during The Promise to be a full moment, just because he was basically bitch slapping Oliver at the time. This time in the police station was their first, you know, real sit down and chat moment. They're not just spitting threats and flexing muscles at each other. Let me know if you thought this too, but whenever Slade was chained up, it reminded me of Leoben on Battlestar Galactica, when Starbuck was interrogating him and called him out for being a Cylon. She didn't believe him, and to prove it, he snapped the metal cuffs like tissue paper and just flipped the table over. I was kind of disappointed that Slade didn't do that. Slade was basically just doing all these things though to create distractions for Oliver while he creates this super soldier army. You know, telling Thea about Merlin, telling Laurel about Oliver, and yoinking his company out from underneath him. Number 6, Slade totally hallucinates Shadow. Whenever they announced the episode, Mark Guggenheim said we'd learn what the Mirakuru had done to his brain and what's been going on in his head for the last five years. And we literally got a picture of that. The Shadow that we saw in the episode isn't someone with superpowers, I mean she's not still alive. She's not secretly a metahuman. It's just him talking to himself. Like his mind created an evil imaginary friend that's just telling him what to do and say. Remember how he was speaking the words that Shadow was speaking? Let's call that Shadow hallucination Slade 2 and the, you know, real Slade, Slade Prime. After we saw her, don't you feel like Slade Prime is still in there somewhere and before the end of the season we'll see him again? In the police station, he said he hasn't been able to get the quote unquote island out of his head for the last five years. So in all those current day scenes, you have to picture Shadow telling him what to do and say to Thea, Laurel, everyone else. She's like an evil Tinkerbell just pulling the strings. After the reveal of Shadow, I feel like, you know, this whole revenge plot against Oliver is something authored by her, by this evil imaginary Tinkerbell in Slade's head, and Slade is just a puppet being used. Number 5, Slade tells Thea about Merlin. He did it just to drive a wedge between Oliver and his family. You know, he's trying to isolate him. I actually expected to see Merlin appear out of the shadows whenever she left the police station. I think that we're meant to take away that she and Roy just split town temporarily. That doesn't mean that Merlin won't come back soon. In the Q&A that Stephen Amell posted before the episode, he said the person that he'd like to fight again would be the Dark Archer because they have unfinished business. 
And he also talked in a different post about seeing lots of old faces while they were filming the finale. Obviously, after this episode, I think we have to assume that he was talking about one, you know, Shadow being back for more Slate hallucination scenes. But I also think he was talking about John Barrowman being back on set too, but that's unconfirmed. Number four, Slade reveals Oliver's identity to Laurel. Just another distraction, as he put it, but I love Laurel's reaction. You saw her eyes darting around as if she was suddenly putting all these pieces together. I think she'll actually end up being an asset to Team Arrow, you know, in a twist of what Thea's reaction was. Laurel has already spent most of the season self-destructing, so I think she's going to become the next honorary member of Team Arrow before the end of the season. There was this really ominous thing the producers said at Comic-Con during 2012 that I just have to mention. They said Laurel will become the Black Canary later than you hope, but sooner than you expect, which is not good news for Sarah. For more on that, please refer back to my number nine top moment about Sarah suicide bombing Slade. Number three, losing more friends. Roy quits Team Arrow. I flipped just a little whenever I saw Roy lose his shit all over Diggle and Sarah pull the arrow on him. I felt like he would explode at some point this season, and I think this was it. He didn't join Team Deathstroke, but he did skip town with Thea. Of course, we all fully expect him to be back in time to help Oliver defeat Slade, but he wasn't in the trailer for the next episode, so it's probably going to be a little while. Oliver's friends and family have just been deserting him one by one, which is Slade's plan, but it's only going to get worse. Episode 19 will feature Killer Frost, one of the villains from the new Flash TV show, and Vibe. Vibe was a good character in the comic book, so hopefully he'll help out Team Arrow at some point. And on to number two, Oliver versus Isabel Rochev, or Rose Wilson, or Ravager, or whatever you want to call her. Let's just be honest and say what we're thinking here, Ravager. Even if they're still sticking with the Isabel Rochev name, she has the fighting skills of Ravager and dropped all of these references about sins of the father. She was mostly referring to Oliver's father because, you know, her name, Isabel, was on his list, the list from season one. But I also think that could have been a subtle reference to Slade being Ravager's real father. If she puts on battle gear at some point this season and looks remotely like Slade, I'm just going to lose my shit. She has history with Slade that predates Starling City, and she knows all about the island. I don't remember from season one, but did Slade know all about that list Oliver's father gave to him? But if Isabel is not his daughter, then he'd only have known her connection to the Queens if he'd seen her name on the list, which is just more evidence that she really is Rose Wilson. Back in that Russia episode, she did talk about growing up without her real father, so it's possible that Isabel Roshev is just her adopted name. But let me know if you agree. And my number one moment, so much awesome here. The evil Trinity becomes Team Deathstroke. It's like Slade is evil Superman, Isabel is evil Wonder Woman, and Brother Blood is evil Batman. Evil Trinity for the win. I'm just going to refer to them as Team Deathstroke from here on out. I love how Brother Blood is basically on a need-to-know basis with Slade, and Isabel seems to just know everything. This makes me wonder if Slade will double-cross him at some point, or use him as a metaphorical human shield against Team Arrow. After all this, there are still a few huge questions that I have, you know, namely, when did Slade start working with Isabel? And after Slade uses his super soldier army to take Starling City, one, what's he going to do with the city? And two, what's he going to do with all those soldiers? The army just seems like a means to an end, you know, as does taking the city. I don't think he cares about ruling a city. So does that mean he's planning on just destroying everything after he's done? It kind of makes me think of in the comics whenever Hal Jordan as Parallax destroyed Coastal City, like literally wiped it from the face of the map. But now it's your turn. Let me know what was your favorite moment and what do you think that Slade is intending to do with the city once he's done with it and with all those super soldiers? Overall, the episode was a solid A+. You know, one of the first A-pluses that I've given to any episode this season. There were so many big moments, I actually had to change my video from top 5 to top 10 just to make room. The rest of the season is just going to be them jamming on the accelerator towards this final confrontation and hopefully an appearance from Ra's al Ghul. I just love what Manu Bennett and the writers have done for Slade's character this season. He definitely deserves his own spin-off show. I think I say that in every video. It would be just like Dexter, you know, with more action, told from the perspective of Slade as the protagonist. To add to all that's happened this year, you know, now we learned there's this new added dimension of his crazy mind, you know, Shadow telling him what to do, like evil Tinkerbell. I just, I can't wait to see it all play out. Then there was that last end teaser, Oliver's comment, you know, we go to war. It's all about them going on the offensive. I have no idea how those Flash characters are going to figure into that, but we will find out next week. So here's a couple of really awesome comic book references that I mentioned, but didn't necessarily fit in my top 10 moments. 
First off was Felicity's line about telling someone the truth and them getting struck by lightning. Just a nice joke about Barry Allen. Felicity for the win. She always has the best jokes. Then there was another giant Thea speedy name drop. Number three, there was a reference to Brother Eye whenever Oliver mentioned people in their orbit getting hurt. Brother Eye was Batman's crazy satellite that stored all the weaknesses of all superhumans on the planet and kind of monitored them. But it also could have been a reference to the Watchtower. So many WTF moments, this is one of the best episodes yet. But because Arrow's on break next week, I'll be doing a bonus video, but I'll also be posting a Q&A video tomorrow. Be sure to subscribe to get everything and leave all your questions about this episode, the rest of the season in the comments below. You can actually click here to get that video. I'll add the annotation as soon as I post that video tomorrow. And you can click here to get last week's Birds of Prey episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.